Hey, I'm Tommy Chong. Welcome to High on Homegrown. Yes, yes, everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of High on Homegrown, the cannabis podcast from Percy'sGrowRoom.com. This Grow Guide section is episode 21 of the Grow Guide series, and it's all about low-stress training. Uh, Very easy to do. You just tie the plant down, bend it over, tie it in place, and let it grow a little bit more, and then do the whole thing over again. Everything is explained throughout this whole episode, but if you have any questions at all about this episode or any of the previous episodes we've done in the Grow Guide series, head over to Percy'sGrowRoom.com sign up to the forum and ask questions there we'll be more than happy to help you out now for this episode we also have chad westport joining us again thanks to chad for coming to join us at the end of the episode you'll find out all the information you need for you to go and find chad on social networks or on his website so stay tuned for that in the meantime here's the episode again if you have any questions at all you can find us over at postsgrowroom.com but for now enjoy the episode here it is we'll catch you in a bit So LST is the subject this week, also known as low stress training. And this is where you train a cannabis plant with as little stress as possible. Hence low stress training, you see? It's so easy, so easy to understand these acronyms when you're growing cannabis. Okay. Thanks for coming. See you there next we go. week. See you next we're week, done. everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're done. <laughs> we did the same thing last week with Toppin. You know, briefly explain it the size like goodbye then everybody that's that's all you need to know we're, we're going to go to more detail that's now. that's all we need to know okay. i hope so because i don't know a lot about low stress training have you have you ever done it before Marge? no i don't believe i have which is why when you guys were like low stress training that's all you need to know see you next week i was like i just got jumped so <laughs> <laughs> please, please explain more so i can learn something mm. here. <laughs> but it's it's pretty important i i think it is anyway especially when you're growing indoors because um, you know the light being a certain distance away from the plants and shit that inverse square law which is more complex than initially thought but it does make a difference when you have a certain distance from the plant you know, when you're growing cannabis indoors you want to try and keep the plant as level as possible and you know try and keep an even canopy a level canopy it's called which is the top of the plants you want to try and keep it all at the same level so there's not one bit of the plant that's too close to the light and then shit loads of it far away and to do this you low stress train the plant you tie certain sections of the plant down and bend it over tie it in position to try and keep everything all level and this is nice and easy to do when you top the plants you know last week we spoke about topping so you top the plant you got them two little side shoots at the top that are going to grow out as they grow longer and longer you keep training them so you tie some string around them and then uh, anchor it to the pot to stop it from growing upwards and keep growing it sideways rather than letting it grow towards the light you're just spreading it out as much as possible and that's the whole idea of low stress training you don't necessarily need to top your plant either some people would anchor the base of the plant and then bend the whole main stem over to try and get more light into the side shoots so then the side shoots grow out and you train them as they go as well but that's pretty much what low stress training is just tying the plant down or manipulating the plant in a certain direction so you can get more light to different sections of the plant so you haven't done it at all before there marge no, you, you, have you have you do you top your plants well, I'm doing micros right now. So if I topped them, I would have nothing left. <laughs> mm-hmm. So no, <laughs> I think I, like when we were doing indoor before, I probably did some of that. Yeah. But yeah. It's good fun. It just takes time. I mean, monkey, you, it does uh main lining and or manifolding is two different uh, ways you can. Yeah. Two different ways to talk about it. But that but takes mean, a lot of training, don't you, monkey? It does. There is LST involved in some of that. I mean, after you do the topping several different ways, I'm still pulling branches down and out. So I'm, I'm using a lot of LST techniques, but you know, there's a lot of high stress topping and stuff like that, that you do with a manifold. Um, it's just a different process. We'll cover that differently, but I have done LST on my first growth before I was brave enough to go ahead and do the topping and do the manifold trainings and mm-hmm. things like that. I have to admit, I was not good at it because I didn't know what I was doing. Um, I found that a lot of guides online were very difficult to follow. And then I found the Percy's guides and they were a lot easier to follow. Mm -hmm. It's just one of them things like uh, people get scared because it's not things you see often done with plants you'd grow in the garden. For example, you wouldn't low stress train a tomato plant. You can, but 
you probably wouldn't. But when it comes to growing indoors, you really have to make the most out of the light. So you, you want to fill out the canopy as much as possible. And it's just the easiest way to do it is by low stress training the plants. Yeah. So Chad, what about you, man? You do some training with yours, right? Yeah, absolutely. I, I do, a, you know, some high stress training, but a lot of low stress training too, for the reason that you mentioned, you know, indoors, uh, intense, you kind of have a limited space or limited height in a lot of these because you have mm -hmm. to account for distance between lighting and all of that so i do i use it to shape my plants to kind of create more of a bush more than more of the christmas tree mm -hmm. and kind of one of the the physiological uh, reasons behind lst is like you said we want the nice level canopy uh, but when we have that apical dominance, the, the highest point in, you know, in the Christmas tree, you have that tip, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's where a lot of the hormones are. And, you know, the, the good growth stuff is getting sent, but yeah. when you level out the canopy, it kind of more gets evenly distributed versus sent to one space. Mm -hmm. So physiologically, that's how LST can help the, the plant and your buds kind of grow in conjunction with, like you said, the level canopy, each bud is, or each, each cola is getting the same light. So yeah, I've, I've, I do a lot of that. Yeah. I mean, I used to do more of it than I do now. I do, I, since I've been growing in organic soil, I've just taken everything like way too easy. I just sit back and watch these things do their thing. I do a little bit of topping and then a little training, but that's it. Uh, yep. Just let it do the thing. So but, what, what am I, Favorite things, uh, you know, maybe to recommend to people who, who are curious about this is a lot of times we'll, you know, we'll cut off those lower branches. Um, mm. So so maybe early on, uh, and what I do is if I'm using pots, I get little binder clips and I just clip them to the side of the pots. That way you don't have to drill a hole in your pots to, that, to that crocodile wire. clips. Yeah, crocodile clips. That yeah. was, that was, I think, I don't know what binder clips are, I assume. Oh, well, they're like... Uh, say if you had a big stack of papers you would put that over it and it would clamp them together so right. it doesn't slide away um, but it basically it just cinches to the side of the bag and gives you an anchor to attach uh, i use twist ties mm -hmm. um, so if you have a lower branch that you know you're going to cut in the future just try it. try bending it down and you know tying it off and if you tie it off with a few extra inches sticking out laying flat you'll come back the next day and those extra two inches will be pointed straight up like a L mm -hmm. shape. Mm -hmm. And that'll give you a good example of, of what you can do when it comes to low stress training by tying things down. So the, yeah, there's loads of different ways which you can actually do the training itself. And like Chad said, oh, then yeah. you can tie a little bit to the actual branch and then bend that over till it's 90 degrees and then anchor it to the pot or uh, a, I don't know, something that's in the soil and there's loads of different things you can anchor it to but most people would just anchor it to the pot uh, i've got if you use air pots you know, you know the um the plastic ones with all the bumps on they've got holes in they're really cool because they've got holes in all the way around and you can just feed a little bit of a uh, string through it and tie it up nice and easy but i drilled loads of holes in the top of my plastic pots when i did it with those but with fabric pots i've just just put a little gash in with a, a standy blade be very careful with that shit, of course. And just a little slit and then tie it around there and anchors it nicely. But top what makes for it, that well you got more use a, I was gonna say top tip for that, use a bamboo skewer rather than trying to um use a knife or something. Mm -hmm. If you're using fabric pots, that's what I do. I just use a bamboo skewer, I'll pop it through and then follow the skewer through with a um with a mm -hmm. tie. But I a use good, those a good one is a, a hole punch, man. Right? Just use the hole same punch. thing, yeah, just same thing. idea. Done. Nice and easy. But um, th there's some things out there that make it even easier nowadays where you can just get these things called bends and Chilbert brought them up there in the chat. And you'll, it's pretty much like a, an arc that goes 90 degrees and you take that and you put it on the branch which you want to train and then just feed the plants into it and that holds it in place. And th they just, they make things so easy and th then you don't need to deal with all the string because when you've, if you've done a lot of training on a big plant, for example, and the string all over the place like a scaffolding, it makes it hard to water your plant when you when you're trying to pour a jug into the uh, into the soil, like, and there's fucking string everywhere. You got to fight around it. It's a pain in the ass. So, I think using the bends is a nice, easy way to get the, especially them top two after you've topped. You let your plant grow a bit, top it, and then you got the top two 
uh, branches that grow there, you can train them so easily with just two bends. You just put a bend on it and do your thing. Nice and easy. Uh, there's some people out there that are actually making those bends things themselves on 3D printers. I, I've heard Ooh. that there's a, a, a model out there somewhere you can download. Sweet. But they're really cheap. It's only like fiver for about yeah. 50 of them in a bag. It's not very much. Now, but, when one thing that I was always concerned with when I started doing this technique was like the amount of pressure to apply or like how mm. far do you bend something? How do you know when it's, it's too far or too hard? You get snap usually. <laughs> <laughs> but there's two different, first off, if you're going to train the whole plant without topping it, then you're going to put a lot of pressure on the root at the bottom of the, at the base of the main stem. And if you bend that over, sometimes it can rip itself out of the roots and you could damage the plant. So if you're going to train the plant without topping it, then just uh, anchor the bottom of the stem first. You know, it's like tie a little bit around that, then around the pot. So when you bend over the top of the plant, it's pull, pulling tension on that rather than pulling it on the roots. So that's important. If you don't do that right, you pull your plant out of the ground. You don't want that to happen. Uh, but if you're topping it, then that's just pretty easy from there. You're not going to put the pressure on the main stem. So you won't put out, put out the roots. Hmm. But, that's the first tie I put in. Is the is that one? I go in at at uh, yeah. Because you don't level. top your autos, do you? You go straight. I don't. The, I just go. I just use heavy LST. So I um I'll go in at pot level, like right on the medium. So it's like right level with the base of the stem as it hits the hits the medium, and I'll mm -hmm. go around that just to give it an anchor point, and then directly opposite that on the other side of the pot, that's when I'll I'll bend that main over, and I start pretty early. Um, I'll bend it all the way over and then let, let it sort of come back. So over the next few days, the, the lower shoots shoot up and then I'll pull them down and then so on and so forth. And as I keep going, more and more shoots come up, more and more get pulled down to the sides. And, um, but I, I also use, um, pipe cleaners to do that. So kind of, I don't know what that was. Um, ghost. Kind of like, it was a ghost. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, stuff banging around in my office. It's the drop um, bears. Well, They've come for you. The drop, yeah, the drop bears are hungry. So, um, yes. Yeah, so, sorry. I'll, I'll use pipe cleaners. Um, I find they're just a little bit easier to work with uh, and they're softer and more gentle on the plant itself. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'll, you know, I, I can get an auto to pretty well double or triple um, and then, and then go into stretch from there. So yeah. So my favorite way of doing that, well, when you do the training, say them side shoots have grown out quite a bit. Uh, I'd first off, I'd tie something around the second node, just underneath the second node of the branch, whichever branch I'm trying to train. And I'd make sure that's tied up well first. And then always cut extra string because you don't want it to be not enough and put too much pressure on the on the stem and break it because you're trying to tie things down. But I'd tie, the, tie that up first and then get the anchor ready on the pot, whether it's going to be a cut or, you know, just something to tie it on or some duct tape or something that, that comes second, tie the branch first and then pull the branch into the right position you want it to be at, and then tie up the, the rest of the string to the pot or whatever you're going to do to anchor it with. It's really easy to do. It just, it takes, uh, and it takes courage, especially for a new grower, because you're going to bend that shit and sometimes you'll go too far and it will break. And if you train in the top two, uh, on the top of the plant if you're doing that too soon before the main stem is a little bit more solid you can put too much pressure on that and break the main stem in half as well so be careful of that too it's all about finding the right balance of tension to make sure you don't cause too much damage to the plant which only comes really with practice yeah. they really don't need much it's mm -hmm. it's not as much it's not it's not like you gotta really it's bend them over they'll mm -hmm. they'll go over pretty easy especially when they're pliable and they're young that's right and we're in early veg they're so easy to move around and, and just bend them to where you need them to be and they won't break yeah to your point usually um the the you know the side shoots that are growing up i usually wait until they get long enough to reach the edge of the container mm -hmm. so i'm really kind of able to anchor it down versus like pulling at a little branch from the yeah. side yeah and then changing the position of it every couple of days, like pain in the ass. Yep. yep. Slowly pulling it out and letting those ones that are coming up through the bottom of the canopy come up as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. And it's the scrog net too. Uh, if you have a solid enough one, I've, I've used that into a kind of flower almost just to lay, lay things out and mm -hmm. just gently bend it. It's still pliable, especially during the stretch. And mm. yeah, you're, you're adjusting and moving that and tucking it every few days into another square. Yeah. I mean, we're going to be covering scrogging next week. That's the uh, topic for next week's show. 
And it's easy to do some low stress training first and then stick that thing into a scrub. And then you don't have to worry about training all the time. It's just keep feeding it. Well, you don't worry about tying things down anyway. You're still going to be doing plenty of training. You don't have to tie anything down. It makes it nice and easy. Good old scrogging, man. I love that shit. But the whole idea of doing this whole training is like, like we said, you want to try and get your plant to be as bushy as possible. And rather than having it grow tall, you want to try and make the most of the space that you have by training out the plants, getting light to all the lower sections that wouldn't have got as much light if you left it to just grow tall and just getting more light dispersed around the whole plant in general, because it will grow nicely all over it. Then It's just taking time to tidy things down and trying not to break things as you do it. Uh, as Bubba Huck said, it's easy. It's if you do it early in the veg period, then the stems are going to be much more supple. You can bend them easier, but the older the stems get, the more rigid they get and they will snap sometimes. And especially after you fit, flipped the flower, as the stretch goes on and it starts moving into the, the flowers start actually growing, the plants will get really, really brittle and they can break very easily. At that point, you want to stop training altogether. It should already, already be done by then. As soon as you start seeing flowers, stop training because you, it's just too easy to break things and you don't want to cause too much stress at the uh, at the start of the flowering cycle there when it's developing its initial bud size. So, uh, do, what, uh, you have any questions there, Marsh? Because I know that you haven't done this before and you, you're wondering, you know, how no, to... It, it, uh, now that you guys have explained it a little bit, I, I feel less chipped than I did earlier. So mm. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> you know, you're just trying to ensure that you have a bigger canopy so the light can hit the plant and yeah. you'll end up with better results. So if i now would this be something you said it was something you do more for indoor versus outdoor right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so i wouldn't necessarily employ this technique with my outdoor grow i mean i would <laughs> you would, <laughs> I would. It, okay. you, you spread it out even more and get an even bigger yeah. plant but it doesn't really matter too much when you when you're growing outdoors because the sun is such an epic light right you, you don't really need to spread the plant out to get more light to it but when it comes to uh, like uh wind and airflow you want Mm. wants you to be able to flow nicely through, through the plant so yeah a little so bit of training instance, might be good for that right so be less about the canopy for the, the sun exposure but more about airflow which would yeah. help prevent the powdery mildew and all that kind of thing yeah too, right yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. i like the uh the high lady's idea for growing outdoors is to grow the plant horizontally mm -hmm. yeah. mm. more uh, stealth and easier for you to tend it to yeah and it will look cool. Imagine doing limbo under that. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm stuck. <laughs> yeah, man, that'd be fucking sweet. But and and that's how uh, you can do that as well. If you're doing low stress training, you can just constantly train the plant so it's just fully horizontal the whole way. And it's easy to do. If these plants are very hardy, they'll survive nearly anything. And uh, we should cover in case you stem breaks or something because that will happen at some point and don't be scared i have had stems fully break and then i've just sellotaped them back on with a little bit of a stint and a few days later sellotape is like you know it's sellotape sticky tape but you can just wrap that around a few times and then wait and it'll be done you give it two three days and you can take the sellotape off again and it would have healed itself it might for a few days it might start looking like shit because there's not water passing through it enough and the leaves will droop really badly and might start drying up but after after a few days you'll see them pick back up again and get straight back to normal just really easy just sellotape around it a stint if if need be just to support it and you know give it time to heal itself and it only takes a few days to get things back up and running again. And that goes for the main stem or two. Main stem, side branches, anything that snaps, tape it back on, give it a few days, and it will most likely reconnect itself and carry on just fine. But there are times when it does die as well. But just, you know, don't worry too much. Set the tape shit together and it should be okay. I mean, I suppose you've had this problem before, Monkey, when you're, you're doing a lot of training. You do yeah, sometimes, get breaks. sometimes you can fix it. Sometimes you can't. Mm -hmm. it's, I call it. It's an oh well moment. I broke it. Oh, well, can I fix it? If I can't yeah. move forward. Remember yeah, the first time it happened, man? He's so devastated. <laughs> yeah. And nowadays I just kind of look at it and shrug my shoulders. It's like, well, I may have lost that cola, but you keep going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's only one piece. That's it. I'm, I've when... done it many a times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it just did. Fuck. 
yeah, I just, yeah, yeah, that's a response. And then I go out and I bowl, spin myself up a bowl and then I'll come back in and I'll have a look at it. I can't have another bowl. And then I'll bring some tape in and mm-hmm. a bit of a stint if I need it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but most of the time, though, you tape them up, send them, they're good. Yeah, for you sure. Know, they, they, and I find that they tend to be some of the chunkier buds because once it puts all that effort into putting a big knuckle there to repair itself, it's mm-hmm. like a super highway. It's almost like um, uh, like a Cushman chiropractic sort of thing. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things called super cropping, isn't it? Monkey just said there. It's, mm, uh, super cropping. But to, to a much harsher extent, especially yeah. if it's come fully off. Yeah, if it's yeah. hanging off by a thread. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Chad? Do you do the same thing when you get breaks? I do. And I the funny you mentioned the super cropping. That's when I've probably done my most breaks. Uh, yeah. I've just pinched them too hard. So the stem kind of splits open. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, yeah, I'll tape them back up. I actually had one, I did that on a main stem and I could see through the main stem on the other side (laughs) and it, it eventually closed, but the plant didn't miss, didn't skip a beat. Yeah. It's crazy what they can, they, you can put them through loads of shit and they just keep pulling through, ask for more. As as long as it still has some of that outer layer to continue passing water, uh, you're right. You'll be amazed if you tape it up, right. Mm-hmm. So there you go, Marj. I'd say that, I mean, that's low stress training pretty much. Just keep tying the branches down and you keep extending the space it's stretched across the canopy. Yeah, I like that. I'll have to try that with my outdoor grow this year because I kind of like the idea of keeping them a little lower as well as opposed mm-hmm. to getting really tall because then they start yeah. to go over my uh, neighbor's fence. Yeah. I'm not sure. They've never complained to me before, but I don't know. Yeah, you don't want that happening because yeah, they'll see it and they might want to take a cut of it you know <laughs> yeah yeah the, yeah. the well, stealth yeah. the stealth of it that's another good point too especially yes. in countries you know where where it isn't legal and you you're trying to keep it on the down low i mean you can't really control smell outdoors as much but you can at least try and keep it low and and have some companion plants around it to to give it a little bit of a stealth look yeah man and it really right. is much easier than you think and if you do get breaks, it's much easier than you think to fix them as well. It's just, it's, it's important to know when to stop. And that's when the flowers start forming on the plant, it, it'll get too rigid. You'd feel the difference in the stems. You recognize it after a while. And th- that's when you stop because you don't want to snap something. I usually find mid stretch. That's, that's when it mm-hmm. really starts to get. Yeah, but about a week that, after the flip, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. 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 And you can tell, you can definitely tell. Yeah just definitely not rubbery and that's what's mm. good about cheese you know when you're growing uh the old uk cheese it's so rubbery so i swear <laughs> you could stretch that plant yourself you know like an elastic band you you know <laughs> it's just rubbery yeah. as fuck man it just trains so easily so much that trains and lights, lots of same yeah so, sorry chad oh i said i wish i knew oh you gotta get on that shit man I'd love to. I'd love to get on that. Uh, you know, another thing, uh, again, too, I always talk about lower branches. Uh, if you're curious, break a lower branch you're going to cut off later. Tape it up, see what happens. Nice. Cut it yeah, off when yeah. you don't need it. Mm, yeah. Good advice, man. You'll see. It, 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 they'll just survive. we like, did something happen? <laughs> we really don't notice much. But... Yeah, they seem to just never skip a beat. When mm. it happens with me, I mean, it just all depends, I suppose. Like if they're, you know, if they're going through other stresses, then, then they may notice mm. it. But if mm. it's a generally healthy plant and, it, and you snap, you know, any of the branch, meh, it'll just, yeah, it'll just ignore it, fix it up, keep on, keep on kicking. The only thing is it takes time to do this whole LST thing. The way, if you get bends or something like bends, you know, monkey says you can print them off. If you got a 3d printer, that would work cool. Because uh, bends just make it so much easier. You don't have to tie things down. You just, put the the stem into the shape around the bend and then just leave it and it'd be fine. But when you're tying things down and you have to get the string ready using garden string, you know, go to the grow shop, get some garden string and you stretch that shit out, clip it. And it just, it takes long, man. It takes, it takes a good amount of time. And especially if you've got a big plans that needs training, it takes fucking ages to do all the training. Sometimes hours, man. Mm. I've sat there for hours, like four hours doing four plants in a four by four. Just training, mm-hmm. training, training. It takes a while. And, and, you know, you break a couple of... It's like the third plant I got to once. I trained two plants nicely, beautifully, all nice, level canopy, and I'm training the third one and I snap a fucking branch. I'm like, fuck, man. 
Yeah. Like, yep. you know, you got two plants, no problems at all. And then one of them just breaks. Like, oh, just push it's it always the last far. one. Mm. Always the last one for me. I'll get through the three. Everything's sweet. Everything's going great. And then bang, snap. Mm-hmm. But they recover easily. Mm. So everybody should give it a shot, man. It's fun as well. It makes it more like bonsai. It makes it, I don't know, you're more hands-on with your plant then as well. It's not just letting it grow and do, just letting it do nature's thing. Just, it keeps you more involved. Do it. Do it. Try some low-stress training. And as, as you say as well, it's low-stress training. It's not a lot of stress on the plant. I think they enjoy it more than, uh, than, than anything, man. But that's about that's it for thing. LST. Sorry, you got something to say there, Bobo. Oh yeah, sorry. I was just going to say it's one of those it's one of those training techniques that you can utilize with any other training technique. So it's it's something that you can do a little bit if you if you're topping, you can still LST. If you you know if you're putting it through a scrog, it's basically the same idea. Mm-hmm. So it's yeah, as I said, it, it, it being low stress, it's a good one to sort of employ across the board. Or if the plant gets too big and you need to do a bit, you know, it's not like you're snapping or cutting the whole top off it. You, you can just bend it out of the way and, yeah. and let it progress from there. So this is how you get your big yields. This is how you you get the the extra, you know, the two grams per watt kind of extra growth to make the use out of the canopy space that you have. And so far throughout, throughout these grow guides, these grow guides 21 now, we've covered everything from, you know, finding the right seeds. We've covered everything, equipment and all this. And now this little section we're doing here with the top and the low stress straining and the, the screen of green, which is going to be next week. You just let you know the best way to get the best possible yield, making the most out of your space and just having a, a big juicy 25 ounce harvest out of a four by four tent. You know, and that's what you should be looking at, which is plenty for a personal grower. So it's got, it's, it would be nice to get some feedback on if any new growers have come along and listened to all these guides so far. Are you listening? Are you, are you learning? Are you growing because you started listening to these guides? That'd be fun to find out, man. So if you want to get in touch, let us know. Hi and homegrown at gmail.com or find us on Percy's Grow Room. You know what I'm saying? The two gram of what when you're using a high power LED, it is definitely possible. I mean, well, if you're using the old uh, HPS and shit, then you want to be looking at one gram per watt. But the new LEDs are very efficient. And if you get a good scrog on, you, you can push up to two gram per watt. Definitely. So is there anything else there to add about LS- LST, anybody? I think that's it's a good job. It. Yeah, good job covering it. Yeah, it's, it's hard to do without pictures. <laughs> yeah, it's much easier to show people a picture and be like, this is a, a low stress trained cannabis plant. But to describe it, you know, it's like the plant that's bent over and tied down. It's a bit 18 plus, you know what I mean? Funnily enough, there's a really good guide over at percysgrowroom.com. Get over and have a look. Plenty over there. There's a lot of guides over there, I've heard. Mm. Mm. Some of them are yeah, pretty good too. It's a great, great little site. Yeah, man. Yeah, so anybody who's listening who isn't a member of Percy's yet, make sure you get over there and sign up. But we do have some listener mail, which we will cover as well. And of course, if you want to, if you are listening to the show and you want to get some listener mail to us, you can contact us on percysgrowroom.com in the forum, in the listener mail section. You can find us on all the social networks, the big ones, Facebook, uh, Instagram, Twitter. You can find us there and send us a message. Or you can email at highonhomegrown at gmail, gmail.com and we'll be able to cover any questions that you have for us. But we had one from Percy's, you know, that's where this, this, where all of our questions come from, really, is from Percy's Grow Room. So from Arnie's Carper, uh, where did you guys, as in the panel members, meet? And how did you start the podcast? I'm loving the range of guests to lessons in history, science, politics, and more. It's nice to hear well thought out ideas and feel like we are all in it together. So keep up the nice work, guys. Keep it up, guys. Nice. Thank you very kindly. Yeah, yeah, we all met over at PersysGrowRoom.com. That's where that's, that's where it all stems from. Apart from Marge and Chad, Marge and Chad were guests on the podcast at one point. Yes, and you know some guests you just click with better. And and Chad and Marge are a couple of those people who were like, they were super cool fucking people, man. We should get them on the <laughs> show more often. <laughs> because uh, Marge was from Bite Me, the show about edibles. Well, she still does that show, and we had her on to talk about that. And then we thought there's a lot of female energy missing from the show and Marge would provide it nicely. So then she yeah, was I'm kind enough to join us. It's, and mm. it's kind of funny because when I first, when I went on your show as a guest, 
think I got higher than I ever had before. Well, <laughs> <laughs> while being online in an interview. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's the rules meant to be. Yeah, but uh, yeah. me and Monkey, we're both admin over at PersonsGrowRoom.com. Uh, TG has been a member of PersonsGrowRoom.com for a long time, one of the original members mm -hmm. a long time ago. Uh, GB, he, he's about been the a member same of Persis. Yeah, he's been there about the same amount of time I have, so, mm -hmm. yeah. And then, then uh, Bubba Hawk. Bubba Hawk has been a member for, I don't know, like a year or something? I don't even know Bubba Hawk. Seems, yeah, seems like pretty, longer. pretty close to a year, mm. yeah. Oh, but I'm always around. I'm always, always there. That's probably why it feels a lot longer. That's right. Because you see me on there every day. <laughs> oh, oh, how did you, how did we cock you up with the show? I don't know. Because you, did you just jump in one time in a Zoom call or something? What happened? Mm, it was yeah, a well, Patreon it was, call or something. He was in he, once or something. Yeah. So we had like one of the green rooms, I think it was. Um, mm -hmm. And and I jumped in for one of those and, and had a bit of a chat. And um, and I think you got me on. Actually, you had me on earlier on a on a session. I jumped on and had a bit of a chat and then yeah got into the green rooms and um yeah and then from there on you asked me to pop on and say hello and i kind of got in the door and never left nice that's what happens with these dirt rcs you get them in the door and they don't go anywhere they stay <laughs> mate if the weed's good we're staying <laughs> <laughs> and then there's chad of course who has been a guest on the show and been on the panel a few times now ain't you mate yeah, man, it's been fun. It was a, a forum member, a guy in chat right now, Chilbert UK. Yes. Like, you got to check these guys out, man. I'm like, all right on. That's so, right. He messaged me saying, you got to go see Chad Westport, man. And I was like, okay, check it out. Cool. <laughs> and here yeah. it is again on the panel, man. It's good to have you, mate. We do like to have, have you on the show. It's cool. Fun. Guy. You guys, yeah. Thanks, man. You guys are doing a good thing too. Get people growing. That's something that I'm always going to support. And mm -hmm. I like the way that you guys deliver it. So, with a sense of humor, but educational i dig yeah. i dig i do we're serious <laughs> you know we're only we're only a little bit serious you know just serious enough to grow weed there you go well thank uh, you guys yep yeah so i mean that's about it really we all met over at percy's bar room and yeah, oh, when we started the show podcast. during the pandemic and when we started it it was mm -hmm. you know dynamic was quite different people had time and stuff and so the show has evolved quite a bit since since we started it yeah yeah, yeah different message different vibe different man, things change yeah and I, I don't know a lot of the production work is done by me with the the editing i do all the editing i do the the artwork and shit like that i do the and i have to go on the social networks and share shit over there which i don't like very much but, <laughs> but yeah it's all kept in house it's all done by us well, mostly we, you in house and stuff like that yeah yeah but all the I'll give, you, I'll give you the credit for it man I enjoy, I enjoy doing it. The bulk it. of it. I enjoy it. It's good fun. And it's nice when people enjoy the show and send us good feedback and shit. Like, you know, this show got me growing. Uh, you, you know, it's like, like the message which we read out last week. It's just always good to get good feedback from people and know that people enjoy what we do here because it does take a lot of time and it takes a lot of effort. But we do enjoy it. And it's good to know that other people do enjoy it as well. Thanks for the question there, Ani Scarpa. It's a very nice question get to meet cool people like marge and chad and everybody mm -hmm. else doing this man mm -hmm. crazy amount of interviews man yeah good shit it's good fun and you get to chill with tommy chong every couple of months yeah <laughs> and people like swami chitanya and you had swami on your show recently didn't you chad we did that was fun that yeah. was a, a really cool show i'm glad i got to talk to him and learn more about what he's about yeah he's a cool guy man yeah then, appreciate that and with so many fucking so many people we've had on the show it's crazy to think about if you would have said a couple of years ago before we started this shit because we're coming up to two years very soon yeah, that we would have spoke to all these different legends frenchy cannoli chad westport you know <laughs> it's, it's so many people man it's, it's crazy we're very lucky ed rosenthal man ed rosenthal has said he'll got like three signed books from ed rosenthal now that's so cool yeah when I went to my doctor and, you know, I was told him I was using medical cannabis and asked about who I was spoken to. And when you say Peter Grinspoon, mm -hmm. they shut up real fast. Dr. Bonnie Goldstein. <laughs> yeah. No. yeah, That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Good times. Don't forget, you can check out all of the interviews on previous episodes. Uh, and we have a question from Stotty as well. Uh, my first plants have been curing for almost 10 months now. I've never been able to get weed to last me 10 months. <laughs> I'll hold it for you. 
Yeah, you, you, you might be able to. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a very generous offer. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very kindly, Michael. But yeah. you, you can't even send weed across states, man. Never mind across the pond. <laughs> I just thought I'd throw it out there, you know. I'll, I'll hold it. Is there a limit on the length of time you can keep weed stored, or could you keep it for years if you wanted? Hmm, it's an interesting question, man. I think there is a limit it gets to after about a year, then it won't improve any more than that. I think all the chemical processes have already taken place and it's just going to start to degrade from there. But if you store it properly, I don't see why it can last for a very long time. But Swami, you, was saying, you... Swami was saying he had uh, he was holding his up to 18 months. Is it that yeah. long? I was, I was just thinking of Swami because he did mention that he lets his cure for quite some yeah. time before he gets into it. I mean, yeah, right. you uh, must know some stuff about this, Marge, right? Being a gangier, gangier. How'd you say it again? Gangier. 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 Yeah, gangier. I, it depends on who you ask. But, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, Swami definitely lets his cure for longer than most people, I would mm -hmm. imagine. Mm -hmm. I mean, most people, I think, like you said, Mac, you can't wait that long. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they want to, they just want to get into it. I mm -hmm. don't let it cure for that long because I got, I got weed to smoke. You know what I'm saying? I want to, <laughs> want to smoke some fucking weed, man. I just look right. at it. <laughs> oh, right. I don't want to hold it. I don't want to smoke it. <laughs> right, right. But I mean, as far as keeping it stored, I think if you keep it in like, like jar, glass jars or something, you know, yeah, some dark, yeah, not clear, dark glass yeah, jars, yeah. you can get those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I well. think two two years old is about the oldest that I've had. It may have wow. been wow, closer to three. Wow. You know, it, it still tasted fine. There, there was like a little bit of an old grandma taste to it. But, uh, <laughs> what does that taste like then, bro? Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Smokes an old grandma. <laughs> phrase, of, phrase of speech. But it, it was just bud that I had seeded uh, intentionally that I just hadn't gone through yet to take out the seeds. And I finally got around to taking out the seeds. And so I broke it up and I smoked <laughs> Two it. Two years later. <laughs> 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 now we got the king of procrastination right here yes <laughs> right. It, it, it was still good though it was still good i mean like mara just saying and you too mackie is storage that's the important thing if mm -hmm. it stays in the dark you know the light degrades the the thc or the cannabinoids in there uh temperature that'll degrade them as well but if it's kept in the right conditions you can almost keep it indefinitely but like you said there is a point where it's not going to get any better and over mm -hmm. time they will degrade, but yeah, two-year-old pot still tasted good for me. Mm -hmm. I remember Swami talking about off canting it as you open a jar, so you know, make sure you, you don't want to leave like a little bit of weed in a gigantic jar because you're going to lose your terps, you're going to lose mm -hmm. all your, mm -hmm. your good stuff. So mm -hmm. that's what he said off can it to smaller containers as you open the jar, keeps longer. Yep, that's right. that's I, I haven't heard that from him. Uh, but yeah, that's how I try to do it as well. Less the less airspace, the better, but you don't also want to cram it so tight that it starts to, you know, create moisture cool. and heat. Right. Yeah, man. A cool, cool, dark place. If you can if you can keep it somewhere that's cool and dark, like I've, I usually put about an ounce or so aside. From, I've got from plenty everyone, of cool dark space crop. here. If anybody wants to send me stuff to store, <laughs> <have> problems, <laughs> plenty cool dark areas. <laughs> Yeah, I just put well, I put an ounce out of every crop aside, and generally I I can get to about twelve months on it, and that's that's about as far as it goes, and it doesn't really change from that point. I find. Yeah, but if you got enough weed to like let it store for two years, or you got too much weed, you need to make more hash. All right, if you got you got shit loads yeah. of weeds like that, make some hash, make some oil, <laughs> spoil yourself, man, make some extracts and shit. Mm -hmm. Good got so much trim though, Mackie. I'd make mm -hmm. it all from mm -hmm. me trim. But get worm farm, man. The, the worms love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I would definitely be making some hash, and you can let the hash cure for a long time as well. If you've got that much weed, you reduce how much space it's going to take up by turning it into an extract. You can feed the worms the, the, uh, the leftovers after you make the hash. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think a couple of years maximum. And once you go over two years, and it's not like it would be shit. It just say it really start to degrade after that point, I think. Yeah. But proper storage, you're going to extend it out for ages. And I don't see any problem with smoking weed that's 10 years old, as long as it's been stored, right? And I bet it'll be this shit. I mean, uh, I'll admit, I actually enjoy the flavor of, of freshly dried weed because you actually get, you know, the really real brisk terpenes off of it right, right away. Yeah. Uh, but then as far as, as far as smokeability, I'm, I'm probably, I like a six month to nine month is where mm -hmm. I'm sweet spotting right there. Yeah. Six mm -hmm. months seems to be like the sweet spot there. And that's how long the, the greenhouse, when they 
uh, take their weed down. They'd right. cure it for six months before it goes out to anybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just, I didn't know. I just, that's my experience. Okay. Hey, may, maybe it's, it's a good consensus. Just let them terpenes, you know, go through their chemical process and then you get the actual flavor off the plant. It's just, it's just when you're growing in illegal places and at any time the door can come off and your shit's going to get taken. So you, mm -hmm. you're going to be pretty good if you've got weed that's 18 months old and you haven't even tried it yet. <laughs> so Yeah. Look, that's that someone else just brought that up in there about um, a, the ice man they found in the Alps mm -hmm. and he had it in his in a pouch. So I, I was watching something the other day and they were talking about being able to freeze it. Um, so they cure it, they dry it and cure it to the point where, you know, the, about sort of six month mark, three to six month mark, and then they'll freeze it and they can store it indefinitely as long mm -hmm. as they're as long as the moisture levels and everything are right. It's like it, flash it freezing, right? is that what it's called? But yeah, kind of like that, but they don't, yeah, there's no, it's because there's no moisture involved. It just, it's just cold. So it'd be like putting it in an ice box, you know, in the um, permafrost or something and just letting it sit, you know, it, it, it has no, no oxygen in the bags because they cryo it and then they just let it sit. So, I mean, I said don't about know how the, long. said about the CBN and shit as well. It's like, it starts off a CBG. CBG is the precursor to a lot of different cannabinoids and then that, but when the THC comes along, it will slowly degrade into CBN. Uh, is that right there, Chad? You seem to be saying in the chat. Yeah, definitely. Oh. That's that spot on there. So, I mean, well, I'd, I'd smoke that weed. I'd smoke the Iceman's weed. Let me try that shit. It's been sitting there for a few thousand years, man. But that's some good yeah, shit. That would be interesting. Right. Mm. You know, C CBN is one of the things that um, the, med the medical uh, community is looking at as like a sleep aid. Mm -hmm. So sometimes if people have insomnia, you know, I'll give them some of the, the stuff that's been sitting around longer, just not that it's tested, but in the thought that it may have higher CBN than something mm -hmm. that's freshly harvested. And I mean, it's just freezing rupture the trichomes. I suppose it would, because it would rupture the moisture in the cells as well. Yeah, well but you've it, got, you've if got it's, the moisture out of the trichomes, though, really. There's still a little bit in there, though. Otherwise, it's going to be dry like sand. You don't want it to be too dry. But... Um, mm. But you, that's why point. you do the flash freezing, isn't it? If you freeze yeah, it quickly, yeah. it's a different kind of freeze. It doesn't uh, rupture the cells. Yeah. So if you, it needs to be frozen, in the, like the way ice cream's made. Freeze it real fast, and then it, it doesn't damage your cells or something. I don't know. There's some science behind it. But, you know, we don't really do science here. Put it all into bubble hash and freeze the bubble hash. There you go. Yeah, but it's very interesting, man. Uh, let us know in the chat how, how long... Have you cured weed for? What's the longest you've cured weed? I don't even know. I mean, I found some weed before. I, I, I like finished a crop, ran out of weed, didn't know where, you know, needed to go back out and buy some. This was a long time ago. And then I was searching around, got to be a nook somewhere. You know what I mean? <laughs> just had that big crop and it's all gone already. And now there's got to be a, a nook left somewhere. And then I found an ounce, it was blue cheese. It was. I found an ounce of blue cheese sitting in the cupboard, like, fuck, I didn't know I had this. And I was buzzing. I was like, I'm going to be so careful with this. I'm not going to smoke it so fast now. I'm going to take That's my it. time. It's gone like four days. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the way it it's goes. When they bro. taste that good, it's just too easy. Mm -mm. When it's Moorish, you know, when you get that Moorish weed, you just, yeah. um, mm -mm, I need another one of those. Mm -mm. Yeah. Mango Kush is that for me. I can't, I just, I can't stop. Mm -hmm. I like it too mm -hmm. much. But there I we go. Stop I can't that... pick the bong up. That's all the questions we have this week, and that's pretty much everything covered with LST as well. So if you want to try and give that a shot, if you need any help at all, of course, just like every other grow guide which we've done, you can head over to percysgrowroom.com. There'll be guides there for you, and if the guide doesn't help you in or answer the questions you want answered, then sign up to the forum, become a member, and ask a question there. There's lots of people who are always happy to help, experienced growers. So ask them. They know what they're talking about. We've answered it before, and we don't mind answering it again. Mm -hmm. Just come and ask questions if you need help. I think that's about it. I think we're done. That's, that's everything, right? Thank you very much to Chad for coming along and jumping in, spending the Sunday with us, man. It's very cool. My pleasure, man. Thanks for the invite, and thanks, everyone, for the hospitality. Oh, man. It's always our good pleasure, to have you come man. and join us, man. It is our pleasure, indeed. indeed. Very, we appreciate you very much. Nice to finally have a chat too, Chad. Indeed, outside of the chat. I'll probably see yeah. you in chat next time. <laughs> Bubble Hodge. Chat, chat outside of chat. Have you you've been spoke to Chad before, haven't you, Marge? You've been on the show with Chad before. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah I have. Yeah. Cool, cool. And and I promised her stickers, and they never oh, came. Oh yeah. Ooh. <laughs> I got mine. <laughs> this is a regular thing for Marge, I'm afraid. I think she's used to it now. <laughs> yeah, whenever you get around to it, it's all good. <laughs> I, yeah, I I, I got to. I actually did attempt to ship it, but I put a pin in there, uh, like one of my little, you know, I put a pin on there, and mm-hmm. yeah. all of a sudden it went to like twenty four dollars or something stupid for oh. shipping. I was like. Let me yeah, take that out and just send the stickers. Right. Yeah. And then uh, <laughs> we'll catch you next episode. Right. <laughs> sure. That's the way it goes, man. Shipping is expensive nowadays, though, right? It's yeah. not really oh, taking really the risk. Is. Yeah. 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 So I'm is it get expensive some... everywhere, though, or is it just coming out of the States? Because I know that you guys in the States have been dealing with some pretty shocking prices as far as getting stuff sent. Um, and even getting stuff sent to us here from you guys. Um, we were talking about it the other day and it was like someone was trying to get an AC infinity fan oh, and it was yeah. going to cost them $400 odd dollars in shipping and taxes. What? Yes. Yeah. No yeah. Just wow. ridiculous. Yeah. Well, I was we, looking at a six ounce package. This is what, about six or eight months ago, a while back. And to get it to Australia, it was going to be 71 US wow. dollars. Oh, I've yeah. had uh, it's just expensive yeah. everywhere. 71 this, for I mean this is not even a half a pound. Yeah. Wow. It's like a minimum charge. <laughs> I think it was just international too, because the same package that I sent to people in the States is like four dollars. So right. it was different. Yeah. And yeah. the cheapest, yeah, the cheapest to send something to the Netherlands to my friend over there, uh, $70 is the base price, no matter if it's wow. like an ounce wow. or like a pound. 70 bucks wow. is the starting price. Yeah, because oh, yeah. every country is different. That's yeah, weird because the UK up. is going to be a lot cheaper than that, and that's not that far from the, from uh, you know Holland, Netherlands. Yeah, yeah. Fucking Mr. Postman killed me fucking <laughs> scooter. Who, who who knows that reference? Let's see if anybody in the chat knows that reference. <laughs> but yeah, they'll probably be in the UK if they do. Random tangent, anyway. Sometimes we have to actually play uh, leapfrog to get things to go into places. Like if I need to get mm-hmm. something to Australia, it's cheaper for me to send it to England and then from England to Australia than for me to go straight. <laughs> Chilbert got it in one. Quadrophenia. That's right. There it is on the floor now. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Fucking look, Quadrophenia is a great movie. Yeah, man. So where can people check out your podcast as well, Chad? While, while we're here, let everybody know. If you yeah, but- project. Thank you. Yeah, let me get off of that other subject. Uh, yeah, Future <laughs> Cannabis Project. Uh, you can find us on YouTube there, also on FCPO2. That's where I do a lot of my shows. Uh, like you said at the beginning, I've been off for about a month over in the Netherlands. So I'm looking to pick things back up here shortly, and you can catch me there. Uh, otherwise, just on the website, chadwestport.com, and Instagram, chad.westport. Nice. And of course, yeah. you can find us uh, everywhere. Just search for High and Homegrown. And, you know, you, you use whichever search engine you like to use. There are a lot of people using Brave nowadays, I find. You... Yeah, that's what I use. I use Brave. Very cool. Well, yeah, and Marge's podcast as well. We did mention that a couple of times. Is everybody yeah. going to check that out? Where can they find that, Marge? You can find that on your favorite podcasting platform. Just search for Bite Me, the show about edibles. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> That sounds bad when you said it that way, Maggie. Just search for <laughs> bite me. Like, what the It'll hell? It'll probably come up. search bite me, though. <laughs> Sweet, man. And there we go. Thanks for listening to this week's episode, everybody. Now, this is episode 21 in the Grow Guides series. If you have any friends who would like to learn how to grow their own as well, then you can refer them to this series and start at episode one and make your way through the whole lot of the episodes and it will teach them everything they need to know to grow their own cannabis at home. So if you're finding these guides useful, please share them with a friend and we'll try and get as many people as possible growing their own high quality cannabis for their own personal use. And that's our mission with this podcast and with our forum. We just want more and more people to have safe, sane access to cannabis. And the best way to do that is by growing your own. So please share these episodes with your friends or people on social networks. Any more listeners we can get into the show is massively appreciated. Thanks for listening. Thanks for downloading the show as always. We hope to see you on Sunday on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash high on homegrown for the live episode on Sunday. So have a good weekend. Stay high, stay safe, and we'll see you then on Sunday. Nice. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye.